Well, welcome to another episode, Making the Game Wraith Binder. The multiplayer spin-off to Songbringer, and check it out. I got the Windows version running, and it's even running at 12 frames per second in debug mode inside a virtual machine while I'm recording this video and using up all those resources for video recording at this amazing frame rate you're seeing right here. Look at this. Oh my gosh. I can't believe, I wonder what it would do in release mode. More than 12 frames per second? I think so. Um, this is after, so I've, I've been working on this Windows build all week, and um, this is my the fruits of my labor, actually seeing the game run. For most of this week, I didn't even have Wraithbinder running at all on Windows, and now finally it's running. And actually when I first finally got it to run for the first time, it took six entire minutes to load. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? It turned out to be that the models were taking forever because there's so many model files it needs to load. And for each model file, Cocos 2DX on Windows, for some reason, needed to verify the case insensitivity versus the case sensitivity of each file name. And it went and did all these different commands in the Windows API to try and make sure that the file name was correct, which it didn't need to do at all because I already got all the correct file names. So cutting that out, made the, the game load in debug mode on Windows a lot faster. Um, I've noticed in my years of game development that uh, Mac, Mac projects run really fast in debug mode and Windows projects tend not to uh, because of the way optimization works in the compilers and stuff like that. Um, at least on the, with using Microsoft Visual C++, um, the default in debug mode is to not have any optimization, and I t it tends to make your build really slow. But it's great because you've got all these awesome debug hooks, and um, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the, the awesomeness that actually Visual Studio brings to the table here. This is pretty cool. I just uh, closed Wraith Binder there, and oh, okay, whoops, there it's going. All right, shoot, I wanted to see that. Um, I'm not that used to this. But okay, maybe it's here. De debug windows. That's it. Show diagnostic tools. There. Okay. This is the data from our run just now. I had um, turned on this record CPU profile earlier, so it's basically recording a profile the whole time. And um, we can select a certain time window just like I would do normally in my other profiling tools. So this is basically this is basically a nice profiling tool. I really like the way this new Visual Studio 29. This is 2019 uh, Visual Studio. And um, I really like the way it's got this awesome built-in profiling. How do I select? Oh, here we go. We got one minute selected. Usually I do like 10 seconds. Let's do it to a 10 second slice of time. That's about 10 seconds right there. And then you can drill down and see which functions are using up so much time. Um, of course, it's going to be tick, tick, and tick animate um, because this is we're in the middle of running. And tick tick is where mostly all the tick happens, and the tick animate is where the animate happens. But uh, check it out. If we drill down in the tick, we can see that um, what's really taking a lot of time on this whole build. Let's go drill down even farther. Is this when we get down to set pause 2D here, and we're ticking the fog of war. And uh, for the fog of war, it has to go and, sh and determine the two dimensional position of a three-dimensional position that requires a view projection which requires a matrix multiplication and in all these matrix multiplications are basically taking a ton of time so not more than they should be and I, I actually investigated this some uh, earlier and basically what's happening is inside this can we actually open that file yeah this is awesome I love this look and check out this out this is really rad um, the profiler on on Mac can't is I haven't never seen it do this but check this out it actually shows you each statement's usage of the CPU, right? It makes it super clear the fact that it's not calling this one here, this uh, SSA e version, which would be the SIMD um, version of the of this transform vec4. Basically, SIMD is when we can process multiple different floating point uh, calculations in one single uh, CPU instruction, and so we're basically not using that awesome feature of most modern day CPUs to transform matrices. So that could be that could be a, a source of huge improvement right there. Basically, just fix this up. Uh, but let's check out how this project is structured. Um, I've got a solution open here called Wraithbinder, and inside it we've got a project called Wraithbinder and a project called Kitfu. Kitfu is basically my engine wrapper layer um, that I've created for 
um, for creating Wraith Binder and all my future engines, really. This Kitfu is, is just, uh, I've always wanted to do this. Basically just abstract myself away from whatever game engine I'm using and basically use my own, it's kind of like my own game engine, but underneath the hood, it's using Coco Studio X in places, still. And uh, eventually I'll swap that over and use my publisher's engine from Double Eleven. They're awesome and they have their own engine that runs on all the consoles. Nintendo Switch and Xbox and all that. Basically, this my engine kit foo or my engine wrapper layer will be able to work with their engine so they won't have to worry so much about recompiling stuff. This will just kind of work for them. And uh, it works really great for me because it abstracts me away from a certain engine's uh, style and the way it you code with it. And basically allows me to code in my own style and what makes it and also another thing about cool about kit foo is that it compiles extremely fast because every single one of the headers that it includes doesn't include any um, STL. So inside this file right here, which one's this? Pathfinder.cpp. We're actually using Q and standard stream and unordered map and vector, but that's inside the CPP file. So, and most of my CPP files do not use that kind of stuff. In fact, WraithBinder is what compiles the, the fastest because it um, simply just uses no STL at all. I've implemented my own map and vector and everything else inside KitFu so I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So basically what we've got here is a, is a project where if I go, I can even go and switch over to my Mac environment where I'm comfortable editing and Vim and stuff like that. Of course I could set that up inside this virtual machine, but it's just way simpler and easier and faster for my keyboard movement and all that kind of stuff to just code in, in this direct um, environment here. But basically if I were to go and uh, just save my menus.cpp file. This is inside the WraithBinder project. If I go back over here to the WraithBinder inside, uh, inside Windows and I compile this, um, we're basically going to see that it's it's not going to recompile KitFu because KitFu hasn't changed at all, but it will compile some of WraithBinder and then relink it and all that. Um, and then and then KitFu also depends on another project I've got here on Windows called CC39. And that's my Cocos, my version of Cocos 2DX 3.9. It's got a lot of different customizations and bug fixes and all sorts of different hacks and stuff like that. So I've got my own uh, Git repo which tracks all my changes to CC39. In fact, I've taken Cocos 2DX 3.9 and stripped it down. I've taken out a lot of stuff we don't need. This is the 2D folder which is way trimmed down compared to what you would see in the actual um, version of Cocos 2DX. Um, Anyways, really nice, lean and mean version of Cocos 2DX, basically throwing everything out that I don't need at all and just keeping the stuff that I do need, which is basically just rendering and sprites, labels, 2D stuff. So all the 3D stuff I handle inside KitFu, which is some co custom OpenG OpenGL for now. So um, that's my, like, Voxel, for example. KitFu's Voxel.cpp is what, is basically what does all the graphics and all the awesomeness, all the I think they're awesome because I because <laughs> I made them, man. Uh, yeah. So, I oh gosh, there's that's really all I've been working on is mostly just this uh this Windows build, but also I've started to finally get this um character menu. So let's check out this character menu. This is neat. I I haven't gotten this, so it's gonna actually change a player's attributes yet. I think. Or maybe it, uh, you can just keep changing them forever. I forget what I, what it is, but there's some bug with this. But still, we should be able to talk about. Was the sound even on? Oh, sorry, the sound might be off. For this whole video. Um, but here's this character screen. I'm imagining it'll be something like this. Probably a darker background, so you can, there's more contrast. Uh, but you'll have your a 3D version of your character, big like that. I just took a, a render from model from Magic of Voxel of one of the characters here and put them over there but imagine if this were actually a 3d three-dimensional model and the and the character over there is you know breathing and um, it just looks really neat all blown up with with actual triangles used to, to uh, represent all these voxels in the background here we've got this is my whole voxel system where everything every voxel corresponds to a pixel and um, but what's neat about this whole menu here is that this is like blowing up those voxels so each voxel is a cube with three different sides visible at once and all that um, but anyways that's gonna look that's gonna look cool I know it is one day I'm gonna be like yes that looks sick uh, but for now we've got this all set up how this is kind of like you know a mock-up of how this screen might look um, you'll be able to switch to your equipment sort of like tabbing left using your left and right buttons or 
by using this button down here to go to your equipment menu. But for now, this is your attributes. And attributes, um, I've got this set up. So now I have um, a few attributes. Like I think I have five attributes I can spend right now, something like that. Yeah, so I have five attribute points I could spend. And basically, it's not showing me that yet, but it is showing me that I can change my hit points, right? Or I can change my attack. Let's change, let's add someone to my attack. Um, okay, so left and right buttons aren't working yet, but if I use the enter button or accept or A button, basically it adds three at a time. I don't know why it's adding three at a time. And it just lets me keep on adding more tons and tons of attack. This is great. I've got like 53 attack now, 55 attack, 57 attack. I didn't have to even level up. I'm getting, look at this amazing attack. 65, 67, this is crazy. So anyways, there'll be something like this where when you earn enough experience through your battles, you level up and you get some ability points and then you can go back to your, your character menu here and spend your ability points upgrading your character or unspend them and rearrange them how you want, I'm thinking. Something like that. So this is kind of how it'll look and then your equipment menu, um, we don't have anything in here yet, but basically it'll show you everything you bought so far, like all your your sword, your whatever cloak you have, um, you know, your blinko or your boots, they, sh they, gain, they give you abilities and things like that. You'll be able to see all that kind of stuff inside this menu too when you're in the uh, equipment version. That's weird. Now it's not even showing anything on that menu. Oh well. So you see how buggy it is. But anyways, that's uh, something fun I started here at the end of this week once I got this whole Windows build going. So, yep, there we go. A very, very buggy version of Wraithbinder. This is getting, um, you know, you're seeing lots of cool, uh, you know, graphics and effects, things like that being created here. But really, this game is nowhere near the vision that, I'm, that, I'm, that I've got uh, for this. So, uh, watch it transform. This is way before an alpha version. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you later.